Da Vinci surgical system is the US FDA approved robotic surgical system and XI is the latest fourth generation surgical robot. It is the latest surgical robotic system in the world and it is being used at Max Super Speciality Hospital Vaishali for all advanced minimal access surgical procedures. So what is a robotic surgical system? Let us talk about it and we will show you how it works. This robotic surgical system consists of three main parts. This portion here what you see is called the patient cart. It has the instrument arms and the switches to control it. The instruments or the robotic instruments go in these patient arms and they are going inside the patient body and this is the interface which is sterile and which is draped. This is called the master console. So this part is the surgeon console where the surgeon sits and controls all the movements of the robotic system using these hand controls and the foot pedals. So these hand controls and foot pedals allow the surgeon to use just his two hands and control four instruments inside the human body. This is the vision card and this vision card <coughs> basically is going to allow the assistants to see on the screen what is happening in the surgery. Also it has inbuilt diatomy and inbuilt video processor unit. So now as we switch on the system, it is going to integrate itself using these fiber optic cables. So we press this button to switch the system on. Then there will be self uh, checks which are going to happen in the patient card and the surgeon console as well as the vision card. And all the three components get integrated using these blue fiber optic cables which, are, which you are able to see. So, the important safety checks happen at this time. The system is getting switched on and the integration of the three parts is one of the most important uh, components. Now you can see the patient card, the lights are getting switched on. Also on the surgeon console, if you can focus and show the movement of the hand controls. So it is actually the surgeon console was checking the movement of the hand controls and now the movement of the patient card arms are being checked whether they are Delivery uh, is ready. Okay, so we got a message from the surgical system that it is ready. You can see the touch screen here is ready and uh, we, we are getting a message deploy the boom. So this is the touch screen and it has a telestation facility also. See, whatever I am writing here, if I am pointing a structure, it goes to the surgeon console and this is a way of communication in between the assistant and the surgeon. And then there are various options to control the console the time pro imaging where we can integrate the previous surgical imaging like MRI or CT scan during the surgery, the endoscope view and the firefly. The firefly is the latest technology of ICG fluorescence wherein advanced fluorescence imaging can be integrated during the surgery. There are other options like uh, we can check the video input, output and there is a my care which is actually going to communicate with the surgeon. So whatever the assistant is saying, it goes to the surgeon console through this mic and the speaker phone here. This is the diaphragm and uh, here is the video processor unit where the camera will be attached. So this is the patient card and these are the four universal arms. So in the previous system or the SI system, we had one camera arm and three instrument arms. In this system, the camera can go in any of these four arms. So these are four universal arms, which are all having 8mm instrument capability. And it can be moved like this. So, there are two portions of the arm. One of the portion is here, you can see these set of joints. Beyond this, is being controlled by this button at the back, which is the port clutch button. So this button, once you press it, Will be huh? clutch. 
So these are the instrument arms which are controlled by these buttons. This is the instrument clutch. So once you press the instrument clutch, the LED is going to blink blue and this shows that the instrument can be moved or the arm can be moved in any direction wanted. But it is not going to control the proximal set of joints. It is just going to control the distal set of joints. And this movement of the arm can also be done from the master console by the surgeon. Now there is something called the clutch button here, which if we move, it is going to control the proximal set of joints. And these proximal set of joints, once they move, they are going to allow us to change the port position or change the arm position. And this cannot be done by the surgeon console. This is only applicable from the patient side. There is a patient clearance button here. And once we press this patient clearance button, the arm is going to rotate itself in order to allow for any kind of, you know, if there is any external arm clashing, we can press this patient clearance button and we will be able to rotate uh, these set of joints so that the clashing does not happen. There is something called a boom rotation button here. So this boom can actually rotate. Once we bring the arms forward, so uh, one of the differences in SI and XI or the latest generation model is that the docking is simpler and the boom can rotate, so you don't have to bring the patient card from various sides. So once we press the boom rotation button, it can rotate the entire boom. You can see, and there is a targeting light here, which glows green, and you can see it is pointing down to the endoscope area. So this cross, or the green cross down there, should actually point to the endoscope area. For targeting, as well as for docking. And this is the boom rotation. You can see the boom can rotate. So if you want to do a lower abdominal surgery, you can rotate it the other way. And if you want to do an upper abdominal surgery, we can rotate it all the way up and we can dock it without changing the entire card position. So this is a big advantage with this system. Now, coming to the back of the system this is this is the touch screen and the controls for controlling the movement of the patient card here is the throttle enable switch which we press and that actually takes the card forward or backward the boom position can be uh, basically changed using these controls and the boom height can also be changed using these controls. So we drape and then we select the anatomy. If we select the upper abdominal anatomy, we select whether the patient card is coming from patient right and then we say deploy for draping. And once the patient card is deployed for draping, then we can also change the boom position after we drape the patient card. These handles allow us to actually put this patient card into the right position, whatever is it. This is the Da Vinci XI surgical console where the surgeon will sit and will control all the instruments. So, if we talk about this console, this is a shell. This shell has the studio viewer which gives us a three dimensional high definition view of the surgical field. It has the hand controls. These hand controls are used to control the instruments using the surgeon's two hands. It has the foot pedals. So these foot pedals, these are the diathermy pedals for the right instrument, the energy pedals for the left instrument, the camera pedal, the clutch pedal and the swap pedal. So it has the energy pedal for the right instrument, the blue and the yellow. The energy pedal for the left instrument, the blue and the yellow. The camera pedal, which is used to control the camera movement. The clutch pedal, which is used to clutch the master controller or the hand controls. And the swap pedal, 
swap coil is used to swap in between the various instruments. It has a brake here which can be put on in order for this master console to actually stay where it is. So these are the ergonomic controls of the master console which can be changed. So if we, you know, according to your own height and the chair height, you can raise the height and tilt it forward and backward depending on how comfortable you want it to be. Also you can raise the height of the handrest. So if I am adjusting this console according to my height, I am going to use these controls and I can bring the patient foot pedal forward and backward and just see for myself and tilt it back so that my back is straight and I am looking directly without any problem and this is how we are going to control the instruments by looking into the screen here there are infrared sensors and as soon as I put my head inside here there are infrared sensors and as soon as I put my head inside it senses and it will activate the instruments. As soon as my head is out, it is going to deactivate the instruments. So that there can be no movement of the instrument tips when the surgeon is not seeing into the stereo viewer. This is a safety feature so that no instruments can move when the surgeon is not looking inside the stereo viewer and there should not be any in unwanted movement of the uh, instruments. Also, there is a speaker inbuilt in the shell. So this speaker takes away all the sound, whatever the surgeon is saying, to the patient car. And there is a microphone also. So uh, whatever here. So whatever the surgeon is saying is taken to the patient car, and whatever the assistant is saying is taken to the surgeon console. So that there is no gap in communication, and the surgeon and the team in the OR can effectively communicate with each other and actually uh, there is no gap in communication. This is the touch pad here. So the touch pad actually has various names. You can select the name and you can restore your settings as per your previous uh, memory. Then you will see there are various controls. So these are the audio controls. Uh, we also have various settings, so you can check for Tile Pro imaging, we can actually, uh, Tile Pro is integration of previous or pre-operative MRI or CT scan or Doppler imaging into the surgery, we can use that. We also use Firefly, Firefly is for Indocyanin Green Fluorescence, which is an advanced imaging technology and we can switch it on and off in between the surgery. We can assign the master controllers and we can do a scaling. So this is a very important feature. If I move my hand by 5 centimeters, you know, <clears throat> or 3 centimeters, and if I put it to fine scaling, the tip of the instrument is just going to move by 1 centimeter. So I can move my hand as if I am switching ball while I am switching aorta. So I will move my hand by 5 centimeters while the instrument is just going to move by 1 centimeter. Okay. Uh, the finger clutch can be uh, switched off and on. So these are the finger clutches. These finger clutches allow the master controllers or the hand controls to move without moving the instrument tips. So we just press this button a bit and it allows the hand controls to move around. Uh, also we can have various settings in our account. So this is a very, uh, you know, this is kind of the master, con master controller of the entire system where you can control almost everything sitting at the surgeon console. It also has a simulator for training people. With DaVinci XI system, we have a simulator at the surgical console. And this is an advanced simulator sim now to allow the residents, the trainees and the surgeons to upgrade their skill set for robotic surgery. They can use this simulator for training themselves and allow themselves to get into a better shape as far as using the surgeon console and the robotic surgical instruments is concerned. This allows for training in a safer environment without any kind of risk to patients and the 
scores are given based on the proficiency and the competency of the soldiers so they can always better their scores work on it so that they become better and better about the subjects so this is the endoscope the robotic endoscope you can see here zero degree is written it has two endoscopes in one endoscope and this is the portion which goes into the vision part here if you focus at the tip of this endoscope you can see there are two scopes integrated into one scope along with four light sources so it gives a very bright light even in 8 mm endoscope so this is a 8 mm endoscope it comes in 0 degree and 30 degree the work we are showing right now is 0 degree endoscope it has a plate to get attached to the robotic system the patient cart and here are the buttons to control the illuminator so if you switch this button press this button for few seconds the illuminator will get switched on this is a button which can be pressed to take an intraoperative picture if a usb drive is plugged into the vision card an intraoperative pic can be clipped either by using this button or by using the surgeon console controls this is the targeting button which is used to target while docking and this is what we are going to see when we dock our patient cart these are the robotic instruments you can see the white colored instruments are for use in humans the red instruments are training instruments they are not for use in human beings but they are for training in dry or wet lab so these instruments have a housing and this is the plate where there are these discs or pulleys which are actually going to translate the surgeon hand movement into the tip of the instrument movement so this tip of the instrument has 7 degrees of freedom you can see this is a needle holder it can move up right it can rotate around and it can open and close and all these instruments are controlled by these fine wires and fine pulleys at the tip i'll show you the force bipolar where you will be able to appreciate it in a better way that how there are fine wires and pulleys which actually control the movement of the instruments so if we so this is a force bipolar and you can see there are fine wires and pulleys at the tip and this is the beauty of these instruments that these instruments are controlled by the disc so here i am moving the disc from the top and it is leading to translation of movement in the housing are actually connected to the adapter plate to the patient card and the patient card is getting the signal from the master console to the fiber optic cable which is leading to translation of movements at the tip of the instrument so you can see how the instruments are moving and it rotates so it provides 7 degrees of freedom and it actually has range of motion greater than the human hand and the precision so every instrument has a predefined grasp strength it cannot pinch more than what the system has made it to pinch for so if it is a ball grasper it is not going to pinch hard and the intestine is not going to get damaged but if it is a needle holder it is going to pinch hard so you should be aware about the predefined grasp strengths and the energy used in that particular instrument this one is a forced bipolar so you can see this is a forced bipolar 8 mm robotic instrument and this forced bipolar has a bipolar energy and it has a force means it has a it has a stronger grasp there are monopolar curved scissors it is a very very nice instrument which we use daily in hernia surgeries and it is again 8 mm instrument with a monopolar energy connected to it so uh, this is the scissors and because of its 
So as well as the seven degrees of freedom, it is a very versatile instrument in the body itself. These are the eight millimeter cannulas, which are used for placing uh, the ports. These are the ports which are placed. This is a remote center. So this remote center is a thick black line, which is not going to move in space. So this point is fixed. We want to keep this point at the level of the fascia, and because it is fixed, there is no trauma to the fascia. There is no trauma to the abdominal wall, and this is different from laparoscopy, where this point actually acts as a fulcrum and it leads to more trauma to abdominal wall. So the rate of incisional hernias after any surgery and the pain is less after these robotic cannulas. We have a cannula seal here. You can see this is detachable, this is a disposable part, this is a reusable part. These cannula seals can be attached, they have an egress and ingress of air facility also. So you can attach the gas to these poles. And this is a 5 to 8 mm cannula seal. So you can use a 5 mm instrument or an 8 mm instrument as well. The robotic system also provides us with 5 mm instruments. This is an optical obturator which is used to insert the trochoids. Okay, so now, so now we configure the patient card for docking. We have already draped the card and now here we select the anatomy. So we can select lower abdominal, upper abdominal. We have a model here for pelvic surgery. So we select the pelvic. And then we select whether we are coming from the patient's left side or the right side. So which side the patient cart is coming from. So here we select the patient left. So now you see that the patient cart is coming from the patient's left and we have selected the pelvic anatomy. And then we press deploy for docking. Then the boom is going to move. Now we press deploy for docking. And we keep it pressed and the boom is moving. It is taking its position. The, the system is moving and drive the laser line to the end of the port. So now it is asking us to drive the laser lines to the endoscope port. Uh, you can see the entire XI boom has gotten up and how it has expanded with all the forearms and it has taken its position based on the pelvic anatomy. So this side is the pelvis, so the robot operates towards itself. So it is it has taken a position, it is going to operate towards itself. So this is how the boom has rotated. Now it wants us to take this target point. If I uh, Press the boom rotation button here. We'll see the laser light, and so you can see the laser light. And what the um, robot is asking us to take this to the endoscope. Now we are going to push the patient car to take this to the endoscope. So now we are going to stow the patient car. Mr. Roshan Kumar is going to press the stow button and keep it pressed. So this is how the boom is going to rotate and all the arms are going to fold and the boom is going to go back to its original position so that the patient cart can be stored. You can see how the five movements are done. And the, the boom has taken its original position. Now we select the anatomy. I will request Mr. Roshan to select the pelvic anatomy as we have a pelvic model here and select patient's left. What that means is the patient part is coming from the patient's left and we have pelvis of the patient in front and we want to do a pelvic procedure. So once he has selected, he is going to press deploy for draping and Mr. Roshan is pressing deploy for draping and now you can see how the boom is rotating itself and it is going to take its position for a pelvic procedure. Now, 
as it takes its position for a kind of procedure, the arms open up. Drive the laser lines to the endoscope port. And now the patient card is saying to drive the laser light to the endoscope port. So what we are going to do is we are going, this is the endoscope port here. This is the endoscope port. So I'll uh, ask Dr. Tushar to also come forward with the endoscope and the instrument trolley. Dr. Tushar is going to plug in the endoscope to the vision card. The other part of the endoscope to the vision card. Yes, please plug in. Please take and plug in. You can hand the endoscope to me. Hand over the endoscope to me. Yes, please. So, uh, he will go on the other side. And this is the endoscope which we are going to plug into the vision card. After the endoscope is plugged in, we would ask uh, to push the patient card so that the green light comes to the endoscope port. This is the endoscope port and this is the laser light for targeting. So please come forward, 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 come forward and that's it. Now move slightly upwards towards the patient side. Towards the patient's leg, some more, some more, some more, that's it. So now you can see the, uh, the laser light is exactly at the endoscope position. We can, um, now we can put in the endoscope. So we'll use, any of these arms can be used for uh, the camera. We'll use the arm too. So Dr. Tushar can just pull this apart. So we are not going to use arm 4 for now. We are going to use arm 3 and arm 2. And first we dock the camera port. So this is the docking mechanism wherein we press this button and the arm is done. Install the endoscope for targeting. Now the system is asking us to install the endoscope. We save the cable and we put the endoscope inside. We switch on the illuminator. This system does not require a white balancing or a black balancing or a 3D calibration. Now, once we have installed the endoscope, point the scope at the target anatomy, then press and hold the targeting button. We push the instrument clutch and we point the scope to the target anatomy. So, this is our target anatomy here. And then we push the targeting button. Once I push the targeting button, the arms are going to target itself. Now you can see the boom is rotating. Targeting complete. So the targeting. Dock the remaining arms. Once the targeting is complete, now we are going to dock the remaining arms. So Dr. Tushar is going to dock arm number three while I am going to dock arm number 2. So the docking has been made very simple in this particular system and it just takes a minute to dock the entire thing. Uh, there is a clip which can be pressed and it actually can be docked pretty easily. Then we take the robotic instruments and we place them in position in the various arms. Now the docking has been complete. You can see all the three arms are docked. And now we can put the threading instruments. So this is a needle driver which we put for the right hand. So the instrument is being identified by the machine. As soon as it identifies, the name comes up there. And on the left hand is the Maryland bipolar. So both the instruments are in there. Then we move the push the instrument clutch and bring the instruments under vision. Push the instrument clutch and bring the instrument under vision. So once the robotic system is docked, we put in the instruments and then we push them under vision into their position. You can see the Maryland grasper has come and Dr. Tushar is going to push. 
the needle holder into view and now both the instruments are into view then we can go to the certain console so we sit on the master console we create the ergonomics to our own height as well as stature and then once you are at ease you take control of the hand controls and you look into the stereo viewer for these hand controls to move or the instruments to move we have to match the grips match the grips means we have to press the hand control and then match the grips here we are using these hand controls to take a suture bite and there is a needle which is being driven so these hand controls should absolutely be under you know uh, in the middle of the surgical field so if my hand controller is going here i can finger pluck it and bring it back if i do not do this then i will be operating like this which is not good i don't want to operate like this i want to operate like this i don't want to be you know operating like this and this is what happened initially most of the time so you need to bring both of them together in a way that you are able to operate from the middle this can also be achieved by pressing this clutch button and once you press this clutch button both the instrument tips become free with the finger clutch only one instrument tip becomes free so once we take a bite then with these seven degrees of freedom we are able to tie the knot with the camera pedal we can control the camera and zoom in which is a very important feature so we can zoom and rotate the camera using the camera pedal so with the camera pedal we zoom in and zoom out as you pull in a newspaper and then we use these robotic instruments to do whatever procedure we want to you can see the rotation of these robotic instruments how beautifully you can rotate it in all the directions and you can see the pulleys and the fine fibers here which are actually controlling and translating my hand movements into the tip of the robotic instrument so this is actual uh, beauty and you know rather than the straight stick like instruments of laparoscopy we are able to get a much better three dimensional view as well as we are able to operate in a much more precise manner so also we have diathermy pedals on my left and right i can use the diathermy for both the instruments i can see whether it is a 0 degree or a 30 degree scope i can do 0 degree up and down i can swap the instruments if there are more than two instruments there and i can clutch it so these this is like driving a car this is like you know how you are going to use your various brake and clutch pedals in order to drive a car so uh, these foot pedals are being used to control all the four arms i am right now pressing the camera pedal with my left foot and what this is allowing me to do is to move in and out using the camera i can zoom in very close and i can do a very precise job using this camera pedal and i can again zoom in and zoom out i can move it right or left and we can also do a 30 degree up and right also using these diathermy pedals we can actually do a monopolar or a bipolar portrait from our right or left foot also the vessel sealer and the harmonic function is being used using the same energy pedals one of the beauty is that as soon as you put your foot here your foot is detected and you get a separate light on the console which shows that your foot is above the energy pedal and you are going to press it and once you press it the light changes to yellow and that shows that the energy is activated so even before you activate the energy pedal you know that your foot is above it and you need to be sure this is a swap pedal on my left side and this is used to swap in between the various instrument so now i have swapped from third to fourth arm and i can swap it back to the third arm it is also used for some other functions like reassigning the master controller or the hand controls to various instruments this is the clutch button 
as soon as I press this plug button, my hand controls become free. I can move them in space without moving the tip of the instrument. So I can readjust the hand control and then I can leave the clutch button. If we concentrate on the hand control here, these are the finger clutch buttons. So these finger clutch buttons, once you press like right finger clutch, the hand control is free without moving the tip of the instrument, you can move the hand control. If I press the left finger clutch, I can move the left hand control without moving the tip of the instrument. And if I want to make both of them free, I press the clutch pedal and both the hand control are free. So individually also, you can clutch and uh, you can clutch both the instruments together as well. Either you can use, you know, all the four arms or in some procedures you just need to use three arms. So accordingly you can set up your system and do the procedure. So now we are zooming in and zooming out with the camera pedal in order to make our camera at a distance which we like to and we are taking this talk using these instruments with 7 degrees of freedom. So the view at the console is much better but even on the screen the systems can appreciate the final results. So now we undock the instruments. So Dr. Tushar is going to remove this instrument and I am going to remove the bipolar. There are release levers which we press on the housing to remove the instruments and then we remove the camera as well. And then we undock, we switch off the illuminator, we can now undock. So we press this clip here and we undock down. It's a pretty quick procedure. So you know sometimes people have asked us what happens if you want to convert to laparoscopy. So this is a one minute job. Not even a single minute. Actually it is a few seconds which is taken to undock. Then we move that arm also. That are stored on this side. And then we ask Mr. Roshan to bring the card back pull the card back from the patient. So now you can see the entire system is being brought back and after bringing it back we will store it. So you can bring it back further, bring it back further and then we, that's it, then we store. So we will ask uh, to press the store button and the room is going to rotate, the instrument arms are going to take the and the entire system is going to store itself. 